Adidas Osra, I think they are. Now, they wanted £25 for these. I offered them 20 they took 20 So I've got £20 invested in these trainers. If these are genuine, they're probably worth about 100 quid pre-owned in the condition that they're in. So £20 paid, potentially 100 but are they genuine? I'm just back from the boot sale and this is my haul. I'm going to go through everything. I spent around about £180. So it's fairly decent spend. Um, but what did we get and how much do we think we're going to get for it? Let's get started on this pile of what some people might call tat. But actually there's profit in this tat. Let's start off with an interesting looking Mickey um, side bag. Like a, not a man bag, but like a crossbody sort of bag. This might have been a Primark. Um, I need to like read the labels properly inside. Um, but it looks like the kind of thing that might have been licensed to Primark at some point. But I paid £3 for that. And I think it's worth about 15 So I've got to decide which marketplace that goes on. Um, let's see what else we've got. We'll come back to those. We'll come back to those bad boys. Let's put them over here. I'm not doing them now. You'll have to wait for those. Check, check app coming up. We're going to see if these are real or not. Um, let's go over here and do a few more smalls. A Disney Paris grumpy mug. I do like picking up these Disney 3D mugs. They, they sell really well, especially if you've got one that's a little bit more unusual. And there's quite a few grumpy mugs. But there isn't that many with the cloud uh, Disneyland Paris on the back. So I paid £2 on that one. I'm hoping to sort of list it around the £20 mark. Um, I also got a really nice um, little set of cufflinks. 1989 Wallace and Gromit cufflinks. Whoops-a-daisy. These are cute. £2 paid. Uh, the guy said to me, it's a pound each for one pound for Wallace and one pound for Gromit. So I said, OK, I'll just have Gromit then. Boot sale banter. Um, <laughs> dear, oh dear. Uh, shout out to Lana from Life in the First Lane. She might appreciate these. She's a bit of a collector of Wallace and Gromit stuff. I'm sure she'll like those. Um, she probably got them. She's got a lot of stuff. Um, Life in the First Lane on YouTube, Lana. Uh, oh, I was there bigging up people and I failed to tell you what I think they're worth. Probably about £15, something like that. They are cute though. I bought two watches. Let's put them here. I got this Doctor Who watch, flashing LCD watch. Now it has been opened, it's been slice opened at the top. So I'm hoping it all still works okay. Uh, it was only a pound, that's what I picked up. I, I don't think I'd have paid more than a pound because these things typically are worth sort of not a huge amount over £10. I might save it for a whatnot show or I might use a different platform. I don't think I'll put it on eBay unless it's worth close to £20 or more. That's my sort of parameters for selling on eBay, sort of £20 plus. Anything that's less than £20 will go in a different direction, probably whatnot. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to take it out in a bit, give it a little test. I don't know if that, like, flips up or what. It says it's an LCD flashing watch. Um, I think 10 to 15 on that, I'll say, if it's working. This one's a bit unusual. I picked it up because it looks like a Swatch. And Swatch watches are pretty good. You know, pretty good to pick up. If you see a Swatch and it's a good price, it's probably going to be worth something reasonable. You're going to make some money if it's like less than a fiver. This was £1, which is why I picked it up. And it's also new in box. It's got its little guarantee thing in there. That's probably worthless now anyway. But it's a bit unusual. An airplane sort of branded watch. There's nothing else about it. There's no proper brand on it. It's not a Swatch. So don't think it's going to be worth loads. I just thought it was quite unusual. £1 paid. Can't really go wrong, I don't think. I'm going to keep it very vague and say 10 to 20 on that. 
I got some super dry sliders. These are quite nice. I possibly might even keep these myself. They are actually a large. They do fit me. Let's just, let's just show you here. Nice. Lovely. With the green socks. What did I pay? £2.50 to be precise. Um, and if I'm going to sell them, which I might do, yeah, because they have actually got a pair of sliders. So it's a bit silly having two sliders, isn't it? Probably 20 quid, maybe, something like that. Now, these, um, quite a nice little brand. Uh, Jambu. JBU by Jambu. So if you look up Jambu sort of, what do you call them? Sort of slip-ons, comfort shoes, sliders even. Um, you'll see that these can fetch some decent money. I paid £5 for these, which is quite a lot on the face of it for, for something like this. Um, but I think we could be looking at around 25 on those. Maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. Who knows? Uh, a pair of Nike Air Force Ones. These are quite a nice design. I do need to give them a bit of a clean up. But on the whole, not in bad order at all. Still plenty of wear left in them. £5 paid. I'm thinking around the £40 mark. I can pick up a pair of these brand new for about 80 so my logic is worn pre-loved probably go for about 40 on that not too bad for a five pound spend and these were four pound these adidas sort of mid tops i've sold a pair of these i think i sold a pair of similar to this recently it might actually just be the velcro thing uh, that's making me think i sold something similar um had a similar strap on the front uh, what did i pay for these sorry four pound I'm thinking around the £30 mark on those. Uh, what else did we get? Let's go to this big tower of pops. Now, I bought these early doors. Um, so these were kind of like an early pickup. I did a deal for the whole lot. I paid £3 a pop. That is pretty much the most I'll pay for a pop unless I know that it is worth a, a reasonable amount. Um, but these will probably end up on a whatnot show in the near future. Um, so what have we got? Horizon, never, no, I don't know what that is. Um, Star Wars, of course, terrible film. Hocus Pocus, that'll probably do quite well. Uh, Star Wars again. Um, Red Jafar from Aladdin. What's that? Ant-Man and Wasp. Uh, Little Mermaid. Guardians Groot. And this one's really heavy, actually. This is heavy. Um, Earth Giant from Frozen 2. Um, so yeah, I bought all those. We we did a deal at £3 per piece. So there's nine there. So that's £27 for those. They'll probably end up on a whatnot and they'll probably shift for somewhere between £5 and £10 a pop. Um, unless I do a bit of research and I find that some of them are worth more, then they, they might go for more. It's just kind of auction fodder, really. Um, I like to have them... Because you never know with these. Sometimes you get one that's worth a bit more, you know. Who knows? I, I don't mind paying up to £3 a pop after that. Um, I really need to know what I'm looking at if it's more than £3. Let's see what else we've got. So let's go to this uh, Beano plush. Quite a big one. Um, I think he's about... 40 centimetres, something like that. 40 centimetres. Uh, £5 paid. And I reckon we can get around 25 on him. Uh, I'm going to come back to these. You have to wait. You have to wait till we do those. Um, I got from... I don't know if a previous video has come out where I shared. But I bought on a previous video... Um, five lots of cards from a stall holder and um, we did £4 a bundle and it was £20 and he was there again today so he had some more there so I bought everything that he had this is a duplicate box it's a new and sealed box um, of like NFL sort of football cards so that is just a multi-listing now because I've already got one of those so these are all £4 each lot. So we've got that one. And uh, what have we got here? 
Starship Enterprise Season 1 trading cards. So I don't know if these are complete lots. I think he did tell me last week that uh, these are like complete base sets or something. So I'll have to check them, obviously. I'll, I'll give them a count up and see if they appear to be complete. This one is actually still... Oh, no, it's, no, it's not that one, is it? There's another one that's sealed. This one's not sealed, obviously. These are like widescreen ones. Let me just take one out because I... I'm not seeing many like this that are kind of like wide cards, not your normal size trading card. Again, £5 for this lot, Star Trek Generations. I'm not sure what I'm going to list these for. I've got to do some proper research on them. Another Men in Black 2. I think, did I did I already have one of these last time? Possibly. This was the one he said that's never been opened. Star Trek Insurrection. It's got some kind of seal on here. I don't know if that is an original seal. But again, it's like this widescreen size. It's not the proper terminology, but um, I assume that's a base set that's complete, but I will check it out. Well, having said that, do I want to open that up? Probably not. I'll, I'll do some checking before I deal with these anyway. What is that? Witchblade. Witchblade? What is Witchblade? Can I open it? No, I can't. Yes, I can. Let me just get a couple of these out because I don't know what that is. Whoopsie daisy. Captain Bruno Dante. Witchblade characters. Never heard of Witchblade, have you? Hmm. Five pound. Uh, not five pound. Four pound. All of these were four pound each. I bought everything that he had, basically. I spent 40 quid. Star Trek Voyager Season 1 Series 2. Quite nice little boxes that he's kept these in. Probably uh, ship them out in these. Makes sense, doesn't it? That is 24. The series. Never seen it, mind. But uh, what we've got here, Thunderbirds. Movie trading cards. Look out for special bonus foil cards. It's even got like a little booklet there on the front. Or is that a pack that's not been opened? Yeah, it looks like it. Maybe an empty pack or a pack that's not been opened at the very front of that lot there. So that's... Uh, I'm trying to see a date. I can't see a date on it, but, you know, another £4. Um, <clears throat> when I first saw this one, my immediate thought was, um, it's a quantum leap set of trading cards, but of course it's not. It's when he did the Star Trek. Um, season 2 trading cards, Enterprise... Wouldn't it be amazing to have Quantum Leap trading cards? Is there such a thing? If you know that there is or isn't, then let me know. But Quantum Leap... I've always wondered why they didn't do Quantum Leap Funko Pops. Because I don't think you can get those either, which is a real shame. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Um, so, £4 each of those. I think my money's safe. I don't know what I'm going to list these for. It's going to be very dependent on listed and sold prices. Let's go over here. We've got a little bundle of Stranger Things stuff. This cost me £10, this lot. So we got here um, a Stranger Things uh, logo light. So this is it here. And it lights up. Two light modes. Um, I'm not sure the value, but I think I'm probably going to go, like, probably sum it on whatnot for something like that. It's perfect for that kind of thing. Unless it's kind of, like, worth loads of money. I doubt it will be. Um, a mug and sock set. Christmas is coming. All these things are great for Christmas, like whatnot Christmas shows. So these are all like £3.33 each. So I don't know, on whatnot, maybe a tenner, tenner each on those. Um, and this really cool um, plush from Stranger Things. That is nice. I like that. £3.33 for that. Probably, you know, it could be a tenner, something like that. Uh, yeah, I'm still going to make you wait. I'm going to do the clothing, and then we're going to come back to that one. Oh! What is that? We've got a text on the Cookie in the Haydens hotline. It's come from George's Treasure Shed, and he's got a question for me. He said, where in the country have you found it's best for sourcing? 
whether it's car boot sales, charity shops, jumble sales, etc. And that is from George's Treasure Shed. Thank you, George, for your question. Okay, you may or may not know that over the last few years, we've lived in a few different places and I never thought I would move so much in my life. Um, we've lived in Manchester, so the Greater Manchester area is very familiar for us. That's home, really. Um, we live down in Devon and now we live in North Wales. So we have lived in a few different places and... I think out of those three places, it's probably hard to get a proper gauge on which is the best for sourcing at boot sales and stuff, simply because in when we were in Manchester, it was pre-COVID. So sourcing was different back then. You know, charity shops were different. Charity shops were more reasonable. Um, everything was different pre-COVID for sourcing. Uh, and we do things a bit differently now. But I, I would say if I had to say which was the best place out of those three, I'd probably say back in Manchester. Um, sourcing was more abundant, more towns, more places to go. Charity shop hunting, the prices were cheaper. The boot sales were more frequent. The boot sales, there was more around us than what there was in Devon and what there is in North Wales. So I would say back in Manchester was better. Um, but it, like I said earlier, there's a rider on that. And that is that it was we lived there pre-COVID. Well, we lived there all our lives um, in Greater Manchester, uh, right up to COVID, and then we lived in Devon. So it's hard, really, because I, I would like to know what it would have been in like living in Devon pre-COVID or in North Wales pre-COVID. Would it have been the same? So that's my answer, George. I would say Manchester. Um, if you guys are watching this and thinking, oh, I'd like to send Car Boot Chris a text or leave him a voicemail, um, with a question, and I'll try and feature it on a future video, um, then the number is below on the screen. Let's carry on with the haul. We've got some bits of clothing. We've got this uh, ladies quarter zip Adidas. It's not a hoodie, it's just a quarter zip sort of sweater, but it's quite nice. It's got retro vibes going on here. Uh, I think this was £3 as part of a bundle deal on the stall, so £3 on that, I think probably like 20 ish something around that and this is on the same stall now this is unusual it's a retro blue label adidas what size is it a uk 12 with a floral print on it now there's a lot of adidas with floral prints i've had them before and if you just search on ebay adidas floral print sweater or hoodie there's a lot so it's going to take me a bit probably to find this exact one, but it's very, very nice. Look at this, how clear that logo is on the back. Really smart. Um, three pound paid as part of a bundle. And I think it's, I'm going to try and probably go for around 30 unless sold to tell me otherwise. Um, I got two barbers on the same stall. Um, these worked out 10 pound each and fingers crossed they are genuine. Uh, I need to check them out, but the stitching looks really nice on that. Um, I need to check the inner. I'm not going to do it now. But, oh, there it is. I'm going to do it now, basically. Um, let me just get that out there. It looks decent to me. I've I've sold quite a few barbers. And when I did a bulk purchase not that long ago, it looks okay. Uh, but I will double check again. Uh, £10 paid. Barber's fetching good money. It's going to depend on condition and if there's any holes or extreme wear or anything like that. But everything looks pretty good. So it's probably going to be north of £50. Probably it could be anywhere between 50 and 100 for that barber, I think. Um, and another one here. This one was also £10 as part of a bundle deal. Um Again, I've got to do my checks on it to make sure it's all okay. Um, there's always an inside, a large inside label that normally has like a uh, a name of the garment, like a, a model name. This one's D whatever Matt Finchley. Um, so we'll do some checks. There's probably another label somewhere in there somewhere. Um, Again, £10 pay. Again, sort of 50 to 100 I'm keeping it vague because there's normally quite a lot of barbers listed and you've got competition there. Um, a Hilfiger ladies 
leather jacket. This is nice. I don't know what four means. It's not going to be a size ladies four, is it? Because that would be like, I mean, is it? I mean, a, a ladies four. I didn't even know there is such a thing. That's going to be tiny, but it doesn't look that tiny. So this might be like hill figure sizing. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. Um, we'll check if it's all legit. This is possibly vintage. See there, 702. So that will be July 2002. So we've got a, I didn't realise it was vintage. I mean, it, it's got a little, some little spots of wear on the inside, but I paid £9 for this. I'm going to hope to list it for somewhere around 50 and uh, the last item of clothing is this. Now, I didn't get this at the boot sale. On our way back, or while we were out the same day, I went past a yard sale. And we stopped, and I picked this up for £5. It is a vintage 80s leather women's jacket. Made by S Skins. Skins, S-K-I-N-Z. And it's got a proper 80s sort of vibe to it. Really has. With the bit at the bottom here. Anyway, £5 paid. I'm, I'm thinking like 40 on that. Now let's come over to these. We've got a text on the hotline. Another one. So the text says, hi, Chris, love the videos, mate. Thank you very much. My question is, what percentage do you promote your listings at? Thanks, Lee. Well, thank you so much for the message. Really do appreciate you taking the time to send me that. I promote all my listings on eBay at the trending rate, but capped at 10.1%. So that means that whatever eBay thinks the correct rate is for, for your item or your category, um, it will promote at that. However, it won't go above 10.1%. I want things to sell. I want things to move. I don't want to store things a lot. And I'm happy to um, promote and try and move things quicker. And if it takes 10% to do it, I'll do it. Because we're in the game of selling, not storing. Remember that. Some people don't like to promote. Some people don't like to give eBay that extra percentage. I totally get it. I understand it 100%. We all pay a lot of fees already. But ask yourself this. If somebody sent you an offer 10% less than what you've got it listed for, would you accept it? Um, probably. I mean, you'd be daft not to. So why not list it 10% or 10% capped? There's lots of things to think about whether you should or shouldn't. What I am doing though, I will say this, I am trialing at the moment, not promoting newly listed items for one week, their first week listed, and trialing not promoting them just to see if it has any sort of major effect. Because new listings should automatically get a better visibility um, because they are new. Also, there's another train of thought, which also I completely understand. People say, don't promote things that are rare or one-offs. Like, if that item is the only item on eBay, don't promote it. You're wasting your time, you're wasting your money. Because there's no competition there. But what I always say to that is, you do realise that when you are paying to promote your listings, you're not just paying for being top of search. You're paying to have your um, item appear in multiple different places across the eBay site, um, even worldwide as well, on different Ebays worldwide, potentially. Um, it used to be Google, but you pay extra for that now, I believe. So, um, like, for example, if you buy something, um, you might see ads for items, like, on your checkout page at the bottom. That's the place. That's a place that someone could pick up your item and buy it. Um, if you're looking at an item, you will see suggested items underneath on the page. That's another placement. So it's not always right to think that just because your item's rare, it's not worth promoting. I think it definitely is because you, no, you don't just get top of search. Okay, I think that answers the question. 
Thank you very much, Lee, for your question. I've made you wait long enough for us to look at these. Um, if you're still here and you've managed to get this far, thank you so much for sticking with the video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Let's get in. This is the last item that I'm going to share with you. It's these really cool Adidas uh, trainers. Adidas Osra, I think they are. Now, they wanted £25 for these. And um, it's risky because you don't know 100%, unless you're an expert, whether they're real or fake. Because fakes are so good. Some of the fakes are even better than the originals, um, like quality-wise. Now, I bought these. I offered them 20 They took 20 So I've got £20 invested in these trainers. What do you reckon? Let me show you this. What do you reckon? Real or fake? They look good to me, otherwise I wouldn't have spent £20. So I'm going to run them through the Check Check app and they will authenticate them for me. If they come out good, I can put that authentication as a photo on the listing and it will help give some confidence to the buyer. But because of the price, potential price of these, they will go through eBay authentication anyway because... Um, if these are genuine, they're probably worth about 100 quid pre-owned in the condition that they're in. So £20 pay, potentially 100 but are they genuine? Yay! Yes, get in there. Genuine £20 for these. It's a nice pickup, but it was risky. I didn't know for sure. That's everything from today's boot sale. Everything that I picked up, I've shared with you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And uh, I'm going to bang up two videos here for you. You know the script. If you want to watch one, I'm going to dig deep into the archives. One there, one there. Maybe you haven't seen it. And there's a subscribe button just down here. So that's it for today. We'll see you on the next video. Take care.